Hello! Before we continue my first ever journey through the Harry Potter novels, just a few quick announcements. First, Potterless itself, as well as the rest of the shows on Multitude, are growing pretty rapidly. There's a lot of you listeners out there, and we want to get to know you better. We want to know what you like about the shows. We want to know what you don't like about the shows, what sort of things you'd like to see from us in the future. If we start having sponsored episodes, we want to know what kind of products you would like to hear about, what things you don't care about at all. So we've put together a survey, and if you fill it out, we will put you in the running to win a Multitude sticker pack. The survey takes about five minutes. All you need to do is go to bit.ly slash multitude survey, fill out the questions just so we can get a better sense of who you are and what you care about. So again, that link is bit.ly slash multitude survey, and we would really, really appreciate it if you take the time to fill it out for us. Also, it is the first Potterless episode in August, meaning that it's donation time. Here at Potterless, we donate $1 for every patron that we have on our team at patreon.com slash Potterless at the beginning of the month. And currently, at the time of recording, we have 438 patrons. So that means we are giving $438 to the National Alliance on Mental Illness. This came as a suggestion from listener Sean Jones, who noted that mental illness isn't handled super well in the books. And there's a lot of things going on in our current life, like the Kate Spade and the Anthony Bourdain thing, where mental illness really needs to be addressed. So the National Alliance on Mental Illness does a lot of amazing things. They do programs that promote education and advocacy and support. They have a 24-7 crisis helpline. They help out with people who are suffering from domestic violence or sexual assault, and they work to promote public policy that supports mental health through legislation. If you want to learn more about them, you can go to their website, which is nami.org. And thank you to Sean for the suggestion. I mentioned our team at patreon.com slash Potterless earlier, and we have new patrons to welcome to the team. Team. So shout out to Georgia Davis, Abby G, Cody Sipe, Rachel Vaith, Chandler McGovern, Kim Braun, Hiker in Estonia, Rachel Harper, David Shields, Georgia Bishop, Carla Gomes, Catherine Stauffer, Brian France, Hashtag Roar Connection, Katrine Monk, Madison Upton, Madison Sparrow, Samantha Fioriglio, Christy Vorin, Michelle Kashaj, Rosie, Izzy Branger, Tammy Banks, Clarissa Machado, and a very special happy birthday to Reese Ponton. And a huge shout out to our newest producer level patrons, Zach Ross Klein, Elisa Figuerora, Jessica Jacob, Orchid Grower, Jonathan Foy, Joe Harrison, and the return of Daisy Curtin's daughter. They join the ranks of Leanne, Vicky, Aaron, Erica, Calvin, Sadie, Jesse, Natalie, Deborah, Clow, Alex, Frank, Marchismo, Tori, Samantha, Juan, Jenna, Kieran, Luis, Akansha, Rebecca, Abid, Caitlin, Benjamin, Rosemary, Jill, Maria, Maria, Lisa, Ariel, Romina, Indiana, Eleanor, Sydney, Billy, Ross, Ann, Mike, Andrea, Nikita, Colette, Chrissy, Shrina, Stephen, Lala, Chelsea, Taylor, Sammy, Lovekesh, Shivarni, Ali, Kaumich, Cassandra, Rosie, Melissa, Amelia, Vince, Sean, Jeremiah, Courtney, Sarah, Jesus, Ben, Emily, Francisco, Rachel, Mary, Sharice, Marcus, Zachary, Gabrielle, Jessica, Natalie, Arnold, Anna, Brandy, Melody, Kristen, Jonathan, and Lexi, whose hands are always dry when they need to shake somebody's hand right after coming out of the bathroom. If you want to be like one of these amazing people and get access to bonus content, exclusive merch, and help out charities while you do so, you can head to patreon.com slash potterless. Finally, this episode was a bit on the shorter end, so at the end of the episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience at LeagueCon, which just wrapped up and was absolutely amazing, so stay tuned for that. But without further ado, let's get into episode 48 of Potterless, covering chapter 18 of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, guest starring Miel Bredo of Punch Up the Jam. So that is the end of chapter 17, and now we get into chapter 18, which is called Birthday Surprises, which should be fun, but isn't. Uh, (laughs) I know, it's the worst birthday surprise I've ever had. I feel like birthdays in the Harry Potter books are never good. Like, they're always bad. (laughs) There was a chapter literally called The Worst Birthday. (laughs) Yeah, um, that makes sense. Not everything can be perfect when you're magic. Exactly. So it's the next day, and Harry tells Hermione and Ron about Dumbledore's task for him, but he still has to do it separately because Hermione refuses to be around Ron, which is, you know, understandable. Ron thinks that this whole Slughorn task is going to be an absolute cakewalk because Slughorn loves you, but Hermione is a bit less optimistic. She is concerned that if Slughorn lied to Dumbledore about this memory, then it really must be something terrible and it must be something Slughorn truly wants to keep secret if he's not telling the nicest guy and arguably the most powerful wizard in the world. Yeah, it does really bring into question Ron's intelligence. (laughs) He hasn't put that together on his own. (laughs) 
<laughs> Ron's like, no, you're going to be fine. You're yeah. way more powerful than Dumbledore, dude. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he just really believes in his friend. I don't know. Yeah, it's I, I, I want to give Ron the benefit of the doubt, but it's a little bit of like, come on, Ron. You got to <laughs> gotta put your head into this one. Harry asks Hermione if she knows anything about Horcruxes, and Hermione says she doesn't. And Harry is disappointed because Hermione needs to know everything that Harry doesn't know. That's why she exists. Yeah, I wonder if Google exists in the Wizarding World. It doesn't, because if so, there was a couple of these books would have been like half as long. Like book <laughs> one and two would have been four chapters long. There was there would have had to be like a different Google too. It would have been like the dark web, but like the magic web. I don't know. I mean, the caveat at Hogwarts is that electronics don't work in the school. Also, the books take place in like the mid 90s. So internet's not super good at that point. But yes, there is a major plot point in the first book where they just need to look stuff up. And then also, I think in the second book, multiple chapters, they're trying to figure out how to make polyjuice potion. So if there was Google, just be like, boom, 20 yeah. page book. Or like an app. Yeah. But thankfully they have Hermione. She's basically the human version. Yes. But this is the one time she doesn't know stuff. So Hermione says she thinks that Horcruxes must be some sort of dark magic. And she advises Harry to come up with a good strategy in his approach to Slughorn. And this isn't necessarily Harry's strong suit. He doesn't really think before <laughs> he does anything. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Not, not Harry's cup of tea. Not his neck of the woods by any means. Everyone remember how much he prepared for stuff in the Goblet of Fire? <laughs> he didn't at all. <laughs> so Harry tells Hermione that Ron said just to hang back after class and and Hermione comes back with, well, if Juan Juan thinks that, you'd better do it. I love that she is sticking to calling him Juan Juan. It's just a lovely little petty streak that she's got going on. Also, like Slugworth isn't Slugworth. What did I just say? That's the guy from Willy Wonka. I, I mentioned <laughs> this in a previous episode. <laughs> <laughs> Slughorn. Like, he's not going to recognize that that's exactly what Tom did. Yeah, right. Even though he just gave that memory up. <sighs> we will get into this later, but oh, it's it's very bad. It's very bad, and Harry makes me very upset. <laughs> so <laughs> Harry, again, tries to get Hermione to drop the hating Ron thing, and Hermione says no, and is actually very upset this time, and storms off. She's legitimately mad. This is the second time Harry's asked her in a short span, and I understand her being mad because Ron is at fault here. Ron is in this relationship just to get back at Hermione and Hermione shouldn't just drop this because Harry's like oh come on Hermione give it a rest Ugh, I find also it, Harry ugh. like give Ron a hard time not Hermione exactly exactly <laughs> Ron pretty much started all of this because he heard that Hermione might have kissed Victor Crumb and that's what started this whole saga so yes Harry needs to sit down with Ron and tell him this not Hermione. It's kind of scummy because it like makes me worried about how Harry might react to like, I don't know, 2018. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Ugh. Girls, can't you just let it go? <laughs> uh, it's giving me a lot of Jason Bateman in that Arrested Development. Yeah, it's a yeah. lot of vibes from that interview where <laughs> he was like, oh, come on. <laughs> it's not a big deal. It's, yes, yes, it was, Mr. Bateman. It's a very big deal. Also, not at all your place to say. Like, if you're going to get involved, choose the right side <laughs> yeah because he's not the offending party no. or the person on the receiving end yeah. but he's gonna step in and speak on behalf of both he could just stay out of it how much easier would that be yeah let those two people talk about it and let the world decide don't be like oh no no jeffrey's great <laughs> <laughs> They go to potions class and Slughorn is teaching them about Gallipolo's third law, which makes me very excited as an engineer because they're finally getting into theory of how magic works, which Woo. they have not done the entire series. And it's all I've ever wanted. <laughs> Hermione starts nailing the questions that Slughorn is throwing out. And the questions are just obnoxiously wordy and verbose where JK writes them basically just to say, look how smart this is and look how wordy this is rather than teach us actually how magic works. It's just just like a paragraph where just like words, 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 words. <laughs> so you're telling me you didn't get it? No, I did not. I was I was very excited because I was going to learn about how the magical world works. And then the paragraph is just adjective, 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 adjective. Like it's nothing of substance. <laughs> if you can't understand it and you're actually an engineer, I don't think there's much hope for the rest of us. <laughs> I'm clearly just very dumb and not as smart as these 14 or however 16 year old kids <laughs> slughorn's task for the students this class is to take a potion from his desk and produce an antidote for it hermione very sassily turns to harry and says it's a shame the prince won't be able to help you much with this harry you have to understand the principles involved this time no shortcuts or cheats which is valid but also get stuffed hermione nobody <laughs> needs this i mean 
a little bit relate to Hermione here because I definitely was that kid in high school. Like people would try to cheat off me. And I'd be like, uh-uh, oh. I don't think so. <laughs> so like, yeah. I kind of get it. I get it too. Cause I was in a similar boat where I had been cheated on multiple times where, and people told me like, they thought it was a cool thing where after a quiz, they were like, Hey Schubert, how'd you feel about the quiz? And I was like, ah, oh, pretty easy. Then they were like, good. Cause I cheated off you. And uh. I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> and we would have these 10 question Scantron quizzes once a week. So the next time I took the Scantron upside down oh. because it's a rectangle. So I just took it upside down and then filled it out. And then Matt Vandiver was like, oh, how'd you feel about that one? I was like, pretty good. How did you feel? And he goes, oh, good, because I cheated off of you. And I said, did you also put your Scantron upside down? And he went, <laughs> his face just dropped. And then he never cheated off of me again. So basically, you're Hermione in this scenario. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't like say a sassy like, meh. I just made him fail a quiz. <laughs> so maybe I'm worse. Honestly, that's pretty tight. <laughs> There was a separate time when uh, people told me they cheated off of me. And then a week later, our biology teacher found out that people had cheated because it was a thing where someone's answer on a test must have been like one off, like all the way down. Like it was clear that they were trying to copy someone's scantron and missed a line. Right. And then people like grabbed me by the backpack shoulder in the hallway and they were like, did you tell Dr. <laughs> Nordlow that we cheated? And I was like, no, dude, why would I do that? <laughs> it's so uh, hard to be a nerd. It's like, I'm just smart, please. Please. <laughs> I'm not a snitch. I'm just smart. I'm just trying to do my best. <laughs> Although I do think maybe if that was Hermione in your position, she probably would tell. What'd you say your teacher's name is? Uh, Dr. Nordlow. <laughs> Dr. Nordlow. That does. That sounds like it's out of Harry Potter, man. That doesn't sound real. <laughs> He was a very good biology professor. But yeah, I guess the different thing with Hermione is that she always helps them with homework and stuff and they're friends. Yeah. So it's slightly different. It makes more sense because she's already mad at Harry. Yeah. So, she, I mean, so there is that fine. thing where it's like once you have a little kernel, you just want to keep piling on. I get it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as we'll learn, Harry has no idea how to do anything in potions. So Hermione is, you know, well within her rights to say this because Harry basically takes the potion, gets to his cauldron and then has zero clue of what to do. He's just <laughs> stares at the potion looking at it thinking oh, what do i do he's got to be the worst star student at hogwarts <laughs> ever not very good he hasn't learned anything from this book so ron even asks are you sure the prince doesn't have any tips hermione's absolutely killing it mainly she is using nonverbal incantations so that harry and ron can't cheat off of her <laughs> <laughs> Which, that is a baller move. Slughorn sees Harry struggling and looks concerned because Harry's supposed to be a star pupil. Hermione notices this and is very smug. Ah, uh, smug. <laughs> <laughs> Harry rushedly flips through the pages of his textbook and finally sees something written near an antidote section that says, just shove a bezoar, a bezoar, bezoar, B-E-Z-O-A-R, a bezoar down their throats. I don't think we've ever learned about bezoars before, but the book says I that, Googled it. Oh, it yeah. came up a couple times before. Oh, okay. Did they? I, Was it just like offhanded? down when. <laughs> <laughs> Were they just like offhanded mentions in previous classes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's been brought up a couple times. Let me d fact check really quick because I think there's one notable reference that your fans are going to kill you about if okay. you don't bring up right now. <laughs> okay, thank you. While you do that, I will say that the textbook says that it is, quote, a stone taken from the stomach of a goat, which will protect from most potions. So it's some sort of catch all it's a antidote. Cheat. It's basically like a cheat <laughs> in a video game. <laughs> In 91, a Bezor was seen on the desk in the potions classroom. In 94, a Bezor was lying on the road into Hogwarts as the carriages entered. Okay, this is deep cuts. It's very, no one needs yeah. to know this. <laughs> no one it's, needs to know this. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Okay, so here's where it's relevant. Snape once asked Harry where to find a Bezor in Harry's first potions class. Uh -huh. And then three years later, so I guess in the fourth book, Harry forgot mm -hmm. to add a Bezor to his potion because he was thinking about asking Cho Chang to the Yule Ball, which earns him bottom marks. Okay. That okay. little scummy stone has come up a couple times. But now it's important. And later in the chapter, it's very important. <laughs> when Slughorn says that time is up, no one is finished. Hermione pulls the classic keep working on your test, even though time has expired move, which was my <laughs> least favorite thing in high school. I hated all the kids that did that. I hated that so much. Where they're just writing as the teacher is physically pulling the paper out of their hands. Yeah, true nerds uh. don't do that. True nerds know better. Yeah, true nerds respect rules when time is up. <laughs> They admit defeat and they hand in their paper. Also yeah. because they don't want to. I had teachers that would sometimes just subtract five points if you didn't hand it in on time. 
So oh to avoid this. But like if I was a teacher, I probably would do the same thing because that shit was annoying when kids And I sit. demand respect. <laughs> I am Mr. Schubert. I am your math teacher. <laughs> So Ron just gave up. He didn't even try. Slughorn goes to check all the potions. And when he goes to Harry's, he sees the Bezor that Harry grabbed from the ingredients closet. And he roars in laughter. He says he can't fault Harry because it is technically correct in that it would be an antidote to any of the potions that Slughorn had on his desk. Hermione, as we knew what happened, is livid. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so she then says to Harry, quote, in gritted teeth, and you thought of a Bezor all by yourself, did you, Harry? <laughs> Very miffed by this situation. The only person in the room that looks more upset than Hermione is Malfoy, who spilled something that looked like, quote, cat sick over himself. Is that just a British way to say vomit? God, that's so much better. Cat sick. Cat sick. Yeah. Oh, there's some cat sick on the rug. Be careful. Yeah, it sounds better than, you know. Ralph threw up on my carpet. Or Ralph Ralphed is what I thought you were going for. <laughs> oh, is oh is that a way to say throw up? Is Ralph? Ralph? Yeah. Oh my God, yes. Ralphing, puking, yarfing, spewing. There's so many. Barfing. I've heard of all of these except for Ralphing. <laughs> that sucks to be what about Ralph. Hurl? You know Hurl. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine like being, hi, I'm the Ralph that they named throwing up after <laughs> because <laughs> I threw up in front of my class that one time? Or can you imagine that in this book, it's Malfoy looked upset because he had Ralph all over his shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Just Ralph. Oh, sorry, Malfoy. <laughs> I, I got some yarf on my tea, bro. <laughs> Slughorn then gives Gryffindor 10 points for, quote, sheer cheek, which uh, had to make Hermione even more upset. <laughs> Harry starts to hang back after class, and this is where I get worried because now I'm realizing that Harry is just going to do the exact same thing that Voldemort did. And I uh, I read this entire page with the biggest cringe. I was covering my eyes like I was watching a horror movie. <laughs> And basically, Ron and Hermione leave because they're both annoyed at Harry. They don't wish him luck or anything like that. He hangs back after class and asks Slughorn, literally in the exact same wording that Tom Riddle tried to pull, uh, Professor Slughorn, do you happen to know anything about Horcruxes? Word for word verbatim what Voldemort did. As if Slughorn doesn't remember giving the modified memory to Dumbledore. Right? I, he uh, clearly is very familiar with this. It's definitely one of these things that Slughorn regrets and thinks about all the time, just like right. we do that one embarrassing thing we did in third grade. Yeah, where you <laughs> yeah. enabled someone to commit mass genocide? Totally. <laughs> <laughs> we all have uh, that. <laughs> uh, but Harry, no. So... Harry, big dumb idiot, pulls this move. Slughorn immediately knows what's up. Whispers, Dumbledore put you up to this. Harry has to fess up because there's no way of lying out of this one. Slughorn says, well, if you've seen that memory, you know I don't know anything, anything about Horcruxes. Uh, yeah, okay, bud. Real good defense there. Oh and if anything, he's so well read that he would know that his memory would appear tampered. Like, clearly, mm -hmm. he couldn't mm -hmm. get away with this and he's still sticking by it. What a dummy. It's very dumb. Harry says, I thought there just might be more to the memory, sir. Slughorn then replies, did you? Then you were wrong, weren't you? Wrong, in all caps. So Slughorn, not doing a very good job of looking innocent. <laughs> also, like, Slughorn has an anger management issue, right? Like, uh, Yes. He is an old man, so maybe he's just entered crotchety old man territory, and we kind of <laughs> give him the benefit of the doubt now. But yeah, he's definitely got a bit of an anger problem. <laughs> yeah, and also, like... A really bad liar, dude. Don't you know, oh, like, the worst. he doth protest too much? He must have read Hamlet, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I wonder what, when he gave the memory to Dumbledore, how he justified the, the fog that rolled in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was February. <laughs> I opened the window. <laughs> you know how fog works. <laughs> or right. it just works like I turned on a smoke machine. <laughs> Or maybe they have smoke machines in potions class. I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't put it past Snape to try to dramatically light the room <laughs> <laughs> before the class turned on the smoke Ow. machine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the final countdown lasers. <laughs> Welcome to potions, Papa. I, that's the kind of vibe I got Snape doing for his first defense against the dark arts class because they talk about how intense his speech was. And they yes. did say that the room is very dramatically lit. I bet he spent multiple hours trying to think of the aesthetics of his first class. <laughs> you don't end up looking like Snape by accident. You know what I mean? Like yeah. That was a conscious choice. He's like, this is my look now. <laughs> <laughs> I will be the dark arts professor one day. <laughs> so, 
neither Ron nor Hermione is sympathetic when Harry tells them about his big fuck up, which good. We, I wouldn't want them to be sympathetic. He was a big dumb idiot. Harry then broods for the next few days in classic Harry form. After these few days of brooding, though, Slughorn seems to love Harry again and seems to have forgotten this whole interaction, uh. which... I don't know if this is Harry being dense or if this is for real. I don't know if this is Harry just being oblivious and thinking, oh, Slughorn loves me again. Or if Slughorn is just trying to be more guarded and Harry doesn't realize it. My hunch is that Slughorn is such, um, how do you say this without swearing? Um, you can swear the podcast is marked with a red E next to the title. Uh, okay, because I really can't think of a PC way to say it. He's just such a star fucker that he's willing to take a blow to the ego. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I think, like, okay, my problem with calling him a star fucker is not the cursing, but I don't know what you mean. <laughs> oh, oh, like he, he's so desperate to be in close proximity to fame. Oh, is that what star fucker means? <laughs> yeah, that okay. you'll literally have sex with a celebrity just because of their status. Okay, that makes sense. That is what the name is. Is. Right. I just I mean, knew there was an EDM artist named that. <laughs> Starfucker, no, not the band. Jesus. No, like, obviously he's not actually having sex with Harry, at least I hope sure. not. Um, uh, but, uh, in fan but fiction, the, I'm sure. Oh, def- oh man, the Slughorn Harry Potter fan fiction exists? It, it exists. It oh, has to. Slug Potter? Anyways, okay. Um, <laughs> I think he probably just wants to pretend to have a closeness with Harry so that it appears from the outside that they're tight just so that he mm. can kind of elevate his own status a bit because okay. Harry's got to be like hands down the most famous person in Hogwarts yes especially this year because once they wrote one good article about him in the Daily Prophet all the kids in school like him again that's all it took was their biased ass newspaper saying nice things about him yeah and even if they hated him even if the articles were awful you know If you're trying to just get famous, all press is good press. Very, very true. So Hermione says that she can't find anything in the library about Horcruxes. The only mention of Horcruxes is in a book called Magic Most Evil, but it's spelled magic, M-A-G-I-C-K, most, M-O-S-T-E, and evil, E-V-I-L-E. So all three words are spelled wrong. I, mean, I, I get it's like the old way of like magic most evil, but... <laughs> you have to say it like that, too. It's pronounced differently. <laughs> yeah, it's the only way to say it is you have to... Oh, yes, of course. Uh, but that book, all it says in it about Horcruxes is, is that they will not speak of them because they're too evil, which seems just like a waste of ink and page space. Yeah, like, what a weird literary blue balls. <laughs> That'd be like if the dictionary... You were 10 years old, and you get the dictionary, and you decide you want to look up curse words, and then you go to shit and then it just says we will not be discussing this word (laughs) rather than just not put it in the dictionary like nothing would pique your interest more exactly it would just make you want to look up what it is even more it's also very curious that like they wouldn't just ask dumbledore because like he he knows he it's not like the purpose of the memory was to ask slughorn what they are it was to see what he told him right yes I'm assuming that Dumbledore probably would have just pulled the you'll learn in due time, Harry, because it's not the end of the book yet. And Dumbledore's just not around a lot. But yeah, there's so many times when Harry has conversations with people where I don't understand why he doesn't ask things. Like a couple chapters ago when he noticed that the ring that Tom Riddle had was on Dumbledore's desk during their first pensive trip. And then the second time it wasn't there. And Harry, as the narrator goes, Harry wondered where the ring was. And then he left. So ask Dumbledore where the ring is. Just, hey, Dumbledore, what happened to that ring? I just, I don't, I don't get, he does this so many times throughout the books. Whereas Harry wondered this thing he probably should have asked about. He'll worry about it later. He's Harry Potter. Oh, God, uh. that's funny. Oh, man, yeah, you're so right. I. It would really be so inconvenient to the books if they just got answers when they needed them by asking the most logical person. Yep, mm-hmm. They got to just try to do stuff on their own. So apparition lessons also not going well. They have just started, and the way that the lessons work is that it is the four househeads plus a small wizard from the ministry named Wilkie Twycross. Hey, I'm sorry. What? Why do they make us memorize names that don't matter? That's my question. Just tell, just say a uh, guy. It's just a guy. <laughs> Wilkie Twycross. When I'm reading the books, I take note of these because I just know that at some point I'm going to start doing Harry Potter trivia and all my friends are going to be like, oh, Mike, you've read all the books with like a fine tooth comb. And then the double Jeopardy question will be like, who is the uh, ministry, (laughs) who is the ministry assistant that taught them 
them apparition lessons. And then I'd be like, oh, a motherfucker Wilkie tie cross. <laughs> you just got to get them all tattooed somewhere. Never oh, like them. Memento. Just put them all over. <laughs> yeah. The other one I took note of was it was uh, Essence of Merlap, something like that. Oh, the thing God. that the twins used to get rid of boils. She really wrote like twice as much as she needed to, honestly. She didn't, oh, yeah. I didn't, I mean, the story for me is not enriched by having like a kooky name on that yes. character. Oh, thank goodness this horrible professor had a fun name that was hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> so Malfoy gets yelled at right off the bat by McGonagall because he is not paying attention. He's in this heated discussion with Crab, which is very sketchy. The instructor mentions that during the lesson, the anti-apparition charm that is placed in the Grand Hall of Hogwarts will be removed for an hour because the weather is trash. And this terrifies me. <laughs> this is really scary to me because I'm afraid they're going to do this again later and Voldemort or somebody bad is going to apparate into Hogwarts. I don't know if this will actually happen, but I don't I don't like that this is a thing that can be done. And I don't know if it'll come up or if they were just doing this to justify them having the lesson indoors because they keep repeatedly mentioning that the weather's really bad. But when I read this, I got very scared. Yeah, it, it seems like a pretty major lapse in uh, like judgment. I mean, I guess the, the kids have to learn somehow, right? But also at the same time, like, Harry suspects Malfoy is a Death Eater, uh -huh. so he could just be texting. That's what I thought was going to happen. I thought Malfoy was going to be like, hey, yo, uh, Dolohov, come in now. The thing is down. I thought or that was like, going to go hey, down. Hey, they're going to take it down next week from one to two, because I'm sure they know when their lessons are in advance, yes. right? Yes. The only problem is that their justification for doing this is because the weather was really bad, but I'm afraid that the weather will be bad another time. But I don't get why you have the lesson outdoors. Your wizards make a big tent, right? <laughs> <laughs> is it or like i don't know run some protection spell around right? hogwarts so, so nothing can operate in like there's so many weird exceptions to rules that were just made up yeah dumbledore did a spell that made sleeping bags and cots appear out of nowhere <laughs> during the series black situation he also surrounded voldemort in water like a sphere of water from a fountain i'm pretty sure he can do rain rain go away us and <laughs> make, you know like <laughs> do extremely something. good point <laughs> I mean, especially like the Voldemort in them could be like, uh, storm be gone. And then, <laughs> yeah, there's gotta, there's gotta be something. I, uh, I'm just very scared. I hope, uh, it, I got very concerned when I read that sentence. So the lesson begins. Harry positions himself in the class to be right behind Malfoy so he can eavesdrop on him. He overhears Malfoy telling Crab and Goyle that he wants them to be his lookouts slash bodyguards while he's doing sketchy stuff, but he doesn't want them to know what he's doing. So it's a very weird situation. Hey, I need you guys to watch my back, but also don't ask about what I'm doing. And, uh, you may die, but uh, I'm not telling you shit. Yeah, exactly. And also, I'm not paying you. <laughs> You'll get great exposure. It'll be so good for your exposure. <laughs> so Twycross goes on and on about the three D's of apparition, which are destination, determination, and deliberation, a.k.a. the five D's of dodgeball, which are dodge, <laughs> duck, dip, dive, and dodge. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was surprised to see an acronym here because it just feels so archaic and to see it in this like super hyper advanced magic world I'm like they use acronyms still yeah yeah it's it's very silly and they use an alliteration acronym we know how much J.K. Rowling loves alliteration from these books mm -hmm. but the problem is all this professor does the entire lesson is just repeat those three words the whole time the professor just walks around the room saying destination determination deliberation and that's it and the kids are all horrible and everyone's wondering why are we so bad it's because your teacher isn't doing anything it's like driver's ed yeah but worse <laughs> it'd be like driver's ed if they just said all right get in the car figure it out <laughs> the three d's drive drive and drive <laughs> <laughs> so no one is really able to do anything until susan bones is the first to make it happen but she doesn't have a successful apparition as her left leg doesn't make it along for the journey uh, <laughs> she splinches her left leg off which i'm sorry i know that they had mentioned it happening in previous books but Imagine you are 16 years old and your <laughs> leg has become separated from your body while you were in driver's ed. Right. Like, I know that they can heal it. And so that's pretty low stakes, all things mm -hmm. considered. But like, I can't not believe that wouldn't give you PTSD. Every time you look at your leg, you just remember the time your leg fell off. <laughs> right. Like you're a fucking Lego piece or something. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, there's my goes my leg again. Yeah, they need to have 
like some serious like trauma treatment at this school. <laughs> yeah, but all they do for trauma treatment is like, oh, eat some chocolate, you'll be fine. Yeah, right. It heals everything. So the teacher just says the three things over and over and over again. So the class ends. Ron and Harry are talking about how it went. Ron says he felt a tingling in his feet at one point towards the end, and Hermione, while walking past them, just shouts, I bet your trainers are too small, Juan Juan. <laughs> Sick burn, Hermione. Sick burn. I'm just imagining her doing it completely in stride and not breaking stride. Yeah. <laughs> just be like, suck it, nerd, and just keep walking. <laughs> Yelled from 30 feet away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Harry decides to go and check up on Malfoy by opening up the Marauders map, which he has stuffed deep in his his trunk in his room. He sees Malfoy with Crab, Goyle, Sabini, and Pansy Parkinson, who I will now be referring to as the racist five. <laughs> <laughs> when I read this, I was like, oh, there's five of them. It's perfect. Yep. So a couple days pass. It's Ron's birthday. The weather is still garbage. So the Hogsmeade trip has been canceled, partially due to this weather, but also partially because Katie Bell is still in St. Mungo's. So going back to the scene of the crime isn't really high on their priority list at Hogwarts. So Ron just has to kind of celebrate his birthday in his room. Thankfully, he's got a whole bunch of presents. Harry gives Ron a gift, a new set of keeper's gloves for Quidditch, which is actually really cool. Like, really sweet That's gift. That's like a really good gift at that age. Like, very nice. Yeah, it's useful. It's something that Ron likes. It's something that helps out the entire Gryffindor Quidditch team, the whole house, because they can get house cup points. Probably cost him some quiche. Yeah, I think it's like an awesome gift. And I've played goalie before in soccer. Gloves are really important. So I think it's very fun. And also you got to consider Ron, who barely had enough money to get a broom at all, might not even have gloves to begin with. Right. And I'm sure Harry, freaking Richie Rich money bag, Scrooge <laughs> McDuck, who's got, you know, a house in London in addition to a vault full of gold galleons, probably was like, oh, yes, chump change, give me the most expensive gloves, please. I put it on my tab. <laughs> That's probably why they're friends with him, honestly. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> so Ron has this big pile of presents on his bed, and he picks up a thing filled with chocolate cauldrons and eats three of them. Harry asks Ron if he wants to go down to breakfast, but Ron is gloomily staring out the window because he can't stop thinking about someone who he isn't sure knows if he even exists. And at this point, I realize, oh, no, the cauldrons! They were, they're the Romilda Vane ones. So <laughs> what happened was Harry was removing so much stuff from his trunk to get to the Marauder's map. He keeps it at the very bottom so no one will see it. One of the things he had in his trunk was these chocolate cauldrons that Romilda Vane filled with the love potion. And here's my question. Why the fuck did Harry not throw these away? What? <laughs> why did, why did you keep them? Why? What is your justification? He knew, right? Mm hmm. He avoided them on purpose and just like put them down. I can understand if this happened the day after he's been saving it. Yeah. This is March and he got them at the Christmas party. He's had these for three months. First off, they're probably not good anymore, but also He's just kept these things that he knows are very dangerous and makes people love the worst girl in school. Maybe, I mean, I'm just crazy idea here. Harry Potter, hoarder. Ooh. He had to dig to the bottom of the trunk for a very priceless item. So what could possibly be on top of it? Yeah, I wonder if he even keeps the stuff that's broken, like the mirror that he spiked in the ground after he realized he wasn't going to be able to use it to see Sirius or the handle of the knife that Sirius gave him that burned off when he used it on the door. For sure. Especially because he has that house. It's probably full of trash. <laughs> well, after Mundungus Fletcher steals everything out of it, it's probably more <laughs> empty. <laughs> so Harry is in disbelief at first. He doesn't realize that it's the Romilda Vane thing. He thinks Ron is kind of messing with him. Harry starts teasing Romilda Vane. And then Ron punches Harry in the back of the head because he's talking smack about his one true love. <laughs> then Harry realizes what's going on. So he grabs Ron and rushes towards Slughorn's office. On the way to Slughorn's office, Lavender is there, and Lavender's like, Juan Juan! And Ron goes, get out of my way! I'm going to go talk to Ramilda Vane! <laughs> so I feel so bad for Lavender here. I know! She, again, she's done so dirty! Yeah, and she's also, she is put in this awful position where Ron is only in this relationship to make out with her in front of Hermione, to make Hermione jealous. So Lavender likes Ron. Ron yes. doesn't give a damn about her. And now she thinks that Ron just dumped her for one of the worst girls in school it's Ugh. genuinely awful the way they treat this character it's bad it's so bad i feel bad for her i get that she was like kind of annoying in some of the earlier ones but still they really do her dirty and also um ron is not exactly not annoying himself <laughs> quite <laughs> i love the kid and he's a great friend to harry but 
he is he can be quite annoying yeah. so they go to slughorn's office he answers the door at the first knock even though it's like 10 in the morning harry asks him for an antidote for a love potion and slughorn replies uh you're one of the best potioners i would have thought you could have just whipped something up and harry actually hits him with a killer save where he says uh i've never mixed an antidote for a love potion and by the time i got it right ron might have done something very serious so pretty nice harry <laughs> is that okay listen this is kind of dark but um by very serious is that like like rape um i i don't mean by i that? no i think he i think it's just harry serious which harry means like he might talk to Ramilda vane in front of people and people, oh people like gosh. in harry's brain what serious is he might do the irreversible damage of talking to an ugly girl in public <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this can't uh, happen slugworm i keep calling him slugworm <laughs> slugworth <laughs> he just he opens the door did you get the everlasting gobstopper harry <laughs> my head i don't know why <laughs> so slughorn then whips up the antidote plays along with harry to talk to ron as if they're pepping him up to talk to Ramilda. they act like this antidote is a tonic to calm his nerves before talking to her so ron accepts it he drinks it his expression changes to horror which they are assuming is just like a realization of what has happened so slughorn and harry are very happy slughorn says let's have a toast of mead and celebrate because he's got butterbeer and mead and wine and all this stuff harry realizes that this is the first time he's basically been alone with slughorn since the big debacle and he starts to think hey if i get slughorn to drink enough of this mead which should have been his strategy from the beginning also isn't it 10 a.m yes <laughs> <laughs> slughorn's early. an alcoholic uh, yes <laughs> <laughs> but I don't understand why this wasn't Harry's number one strategy because we know drunk. Slughorn likes to drink. Just get him drunk. Boom. Wow. Yeah. Easy money. Yeah. Harry's kind of an impulsive guy. Let's be real. Uh, yeah. And Harry's pretended to, Harry has done well with acting like he's not drinking stuff before. When Umbridge tried to get him to drink the stuff with Veritas here a minute, I think he did the thing where he like put it up to his lips, but didn't actually swallow any of it. So he totally could have done the thing, you know, where you throw the shot behind your head uh, multiple times and get Slughorn Wait, wasted. have you done that? I have not done it, but people on TV do it. <laughs> I'm not going to let free works. alcohol go to it. No, it doesn't. You'd have to, <laughs> I, but I, I have done. You'd be soaking wet on the wall behind you. <laughs> I've done the at college parties because I didn't start drinking until I was 21. It's not like I was going to get peer pressured, but it was just annoying when people would ask about it. So I would just like fill a solo cup with water or yeah. put like a lime and ice cubes in it. And then people would be like, oh, nice. You have a gin and tonic. It's like, it's yeah. a Sprite. And I just wouldn't tell people <laughs> either that or what I found out by accident is a great way to avoid peer pressure. Tell someone you just took a Tylenol and no one will give you any flack. Oh. Oh, you're on prescription medication and that's it interferes with alcohol literally one time i like had a really bad headache i took an advil we went out to uh there was a house party going on and someone's like why aren't you drinking schubert and i was like oh i took an advil and they're like oh never mind never mind never mind and this was after i had already turned 21 and i was like no i should have been saying this for years rather than being honest about me not wanting to drink until i was of age i would say probably the best way to hide that you're not drinking so your friends don't shame you is to get better friends yeah and i was gonna to say the real answer to all of this because i never got made fun of by anyone that i actually cared about <laughs> right. the real answer is just brush off anyone that is going to peer pressure you or shit talk you for not drinking because they are a garbage human and they're not <laughs> worth your time at all just tell them i'm waiting to drink you came here for harry potter you're leaving with some moral lessons look at that i mean my go-to excuse like what i would actually tell people in college is like have you seen how obnoxious i am without alcohol do we really <laughs> want to throw that into the mix and they'd be like oh yeah touche <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I don't get why this wasn't just a strategy from the beginning, but they decide that they're going to take a toast of mead. He pours glasses for the three of them. He starts to do this long-winded toast, and before Slughorn can finish it, Ron just slams back the mead, but then he starts freaking out, and it's very Katie Bell-esque, where his extremities are jerking all over, his eyes are bulging out of their sockets, he's turning blue, and he's foaming at the mouth. So... <gasps> Just like a bad combination of four things. Any one of these would have been bad, but all four happening at the same time is a bit much. I, I'm trying to imagine this happening to like a friend when we're having a drink and I don't, I don't know what I would do. I'd be so shocked. I am amazed of what Harry does next, which is he freaks out for a very short amount of time, but he realizes that Slughorn doesn't know that there's an issue and Harry's got to figure it out. And he finds the Bezor that Slughorn brought back from class, takes it, shoves it into Ron's mouth, and then he calms it down and is still. 
And that's the end of the chapter. Oh! <laughs> and that's the end of this episode of Potterless. So this, this is making me very confused. I'm assuming the next chapter will let me know what is going on. But basically, we have a cursed necklace and now potentially a cursed bottle of mead. I don't see any real connection between the two, except that the necklace, I think they said they, that, that when Katie Bell got the package, she said it was in the bathroom of the three broomsticks where Madame mm. Rose Myrta works. So that's the only connection that I can have together is that one is alcohol and then one is in a place that serves alcohol. Mm. I don't know how it's connected. I guess it will depend. I hope that in chapter 19, the first thing Harry asks is, where the fuck did you get that meat from, Slughorn? <laughs> like, I hope, I hope that is the first sentence of the next page that I read. But yeah, th I don't know what is the connection between these two cursed things, but so far the common link is alcohol. I will see how this plays out in the future. <laughs> you think Ron's gonna be okay? Mm -hmm. It's only book six, and Ron marries Hermione, so. <laughs> uh, who <laughs> says, bro, where'd you get that information? Unfortunately, Tumblr. That's where I learned all the spoilers. <laughs> what were you doing on Tumblr? I was in high school. I made YouTube videos. It was a, you just had to do all of them. I did like one year of Tumblr, and then I was like, I'm done. I, I can't do this anymore. There's well, too much I guess, happening. I guess I can tell you they get married in the next chapter. So. Oh, oh, wow! But then Ron dies. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the marriages where it's like he's gonna die, so they get married, so that they <laughs> ended on a good note. Yep. So don't uh, even spoil anything on this episode. Ba -ba -da -ba. What a great way. Yeah, so that's the end of this episode of Potter's Meal. How do you feel about chapter 18? <sighs> I feel privileged to be here for <laughs> such a momentous chapter. <laughs> yeah, you get the horrible teacher. You get Ron almost dying. <laughs> yeah, we heard a lot about Horcruxes, even though we really didn't hear anything at all about them. We heard the word Horcrux a lot, <laughs> but, but that's, not, that's about we it. We hear about the splinting. That's not what it's called. The schmiffing, the skinking. The splint. What's it? Splinching. Splinching. That's the word. <laughs> Just like you said the first time. <laughs> okay, good. This is a chapter to me where I feel like things kind of start to get a little more serious. Uh, <laughs> At uh, least in this book. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Things have been hitting the fan all book, but this one in particular is... Like when Katie Bell gets possessed, it's like, okay, we don't know anything about Who's Katie, Katie Bell. Who's Katie Bell, right? Yeah, she's on the Quidditch team. Great. But when it happens to Ron... Now it's more serious. Right. Like now it's a big deal because yeah. he's one of the three we care about. <laughs> so yep. And it also it also really makes me this is a chapter that does not endear me to Harry very much, I will say. No, yeah. Not a good chapter for Harry. Not a good luck. He sounds kind of obsessive in a way that's super obnoxious. That mm -hmm. like he just gets stewing on things that I mean, for all we know at this point, don't matter at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but ultimately, um, cliffhanger, big cliffhanger. Huge. Super spicy. It feels like an episode of Dragon Ball Z. Oh, yes. And then the next episode, Potters will just be screaming for 45 minutes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Miel, thank you for returning for another episode of Potters. Is there anything you want to plug? Uh, obviously, punch up the jam. Yeah, it's mainly it. Follow if you like uh, my horrible jokes here. Uh, you might <laughs> like them on Punch Up the Jam, too. <laughs> yeah, 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 so good. It's a great, I love, it is a very fun podcast. I cannot recommend it enough. The problem is the pit, the songs you pick are all like earworm songs and now they're all <laughs> stuck in my head because I've binged the podcast, which is a bad idea. I've binged a podcast about earworm songs. My yep. brain hates me. <laughs> and anytime you hear them in the airport at the grocery store at a party, they will haunt you forever. I was in, I was in the grocery store and then I, <laughs> as soon as I opened the doors, it's like, blung, blung. I just hear, crash <laughs> into me. I was like, no, <laughs> Dave. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's an amazing podcast. It's very fun. It's <laughs> Thanks. Fun. But yes, Miel, thank you so much for joining. Listeners, thank, thank you for you having so much me. For, uh, no problem. It's my pleasure. And listeners, thanks for listening. And until next time, as they say in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, every day before they start apparition lessons, <gasps> wizard on. <laughs> God, I wish that was real. I wish they were Doesn't like, it? hey guys, oh, uh, fucking wizard on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You got the uh, W's. <laughs> yeah, they dropped the West Side W. <laughs> Twitter is one of the most active places I am on social media, tweeting about the show, talking with listeners, sending out, in my very biased opinion, some very funny tweets. If you want to see any and all of those, go to twitter.com slash potterlesspod. Potterless was created by Mick Schubert. It is hosted by Mick Schubert. It is edited by Mick Schubert. It is produced by Mick Schubert, as well as Leanne Davis, Vicky Garcia, Aaron Johnson, Erica and Calvin Bauer, Sadie Bear, Jesse Horgan, Natalie Klobuchar, Deborah Wilkins, Klaus Serlopu, Alex Stark, Rebecca Admick, Frank Chiotto, Marchismo, Tori Larsic, Samantha Rose, Juan Sanfeli, Eugenia Dowsett, Kieran 
Webb, Luis Nusak, Akanksha, Saxena, Abid, Ahmed, Caitlin, Jordan, Pontello, Benjamin, Bridges, Rosemary, Dodge, Jill, Boulay, Marie, Lisa C. Keen, Maria Paulson, Ariel Bird, Romina Rivadanira, Camille Doc, Anthony Bonarigo, Diego Matienzo, Russell Dunk, Jenny Nilsson, Dustin Bolin Cooch, Katie Rogers, Audra, Indiana Mercer, Eleanor Curlin, Sydney Cawthorn, Billy Hinton, Ross Ann Batamana, Mike Cole, Andrea Franz, Nikita Power, Colette Smith, Chrissy Blackburn, Trina Unad, Catch, Stephen Gagne, Lala Palmer, Chelsea Green, Taylor Armstead, Sammy Curti, Love Cash Longer, Shervani Patel, Ali Madsen, Kamush Cassandra, Aponte, Roxy Chaos, Melissa Traver, Amelia Kraus, Vince Clancy, Sean Montag, Jeremiah E. Hurd, Courtney Allingham, Sarah Nink, Jesus J. Morales, Ben Silver, Emily Bird, Francisco Batista, Rachel Guthrie, Mary Bushlin, Sharice Camontague, Zachary Polito, Gabrielle Medcroft, Jessica Ann, Natalie Jung, Arna Goodna Daughter, Brandy Boldonado, Melody McInnes, Christy Chavez, Jonathan Swaney, Lexi Vergara, Zach Ross Klein, Elisa Figueroa, Daisy Kartenstadter, Jessica Jacob, Orchid Grower, Jonathan Foy, Joe Harrison, and Marcus Zeller. Web designed by Kelly Beckman, and the music is by Bettina Campomanos. You can find us at facebook.com slash potterless. You can find us at instagram.com slash potterless podcast and twitter.com slash potterless pod. All information about the show is at potterlesspodcast.com, and we're on all of your preferred podcasting apps, including Spotify. Thanks again for listening, and until next time, wizard on! Uh, wizard on indeed. Hi guys, it's still me. So I just wrapped up my time here at LeakyCon in Dallas, and I just wanted to talk a little bit because it was a truly amazing experience. I was here hosting two panels, the first of which was called Harry Potter with two Ds because it was a panel of a bunch of different Harry Potter podcast hosts just doing a Q&A session about what it's like to host the podcast, what are some of the great elements, what are some of the challenging elements. It was a really fun time, and the other panel that I was hosting was just just a solo presentation that I put on called Deferred Acceptance, the experience of coming into the Harry Potter series and reading the books as an adult. And both of these were so much fun. The Deferred Acceptance one was like a more thorough explanation of how I came to start the series, why it took me so long to get there, and just the difference in approach that I've had as an adult versus how I probably would have reacted if I read them as a kid. And for both of these panels, I'm going to put the audio online for free, so don't worry, it will be there. I might put the slides up as well. But in addition to running these panels and getting to meet a lot of great people there, I got to meet so many people that were already listeners of the show and just wanted to meet me. I had a meetup in Dallas at a brewery that was near the convention center, and there were people who were in attendance at LeakyCon there. There were people who were just local to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and we all just kind of gathered around a couple tables at this brewery. We were also there with the folks from Potterotica, which was great, and we all just had wonderful conversations about Harry Potter things, about not Harry Potter things about all sorts of stuff and by the end of it people were exchanging phone numbers so they could be friends and hang out afterwards and I literally could not have asked for a better experience it was so fantastic to get to know some of the listeners better and really prove that we are friends we are all friends here and it was so great and this was the first convention that I've really gone to at a big scale and I really hope that it is the first of many to come so I had a absolutely amazing time. I had so much fun meeting everybody and getting to know everyone and talking about all sorts of Harry Potter things and fan theories and all of that. And I really hope that there is more to come. So I just want to say thanks to everybody who supports the show, whether you are at LeakyCon or not, whether you reach out on social media or not, no matter what, just the fact that you are listening to the show and making this community what it is makes me so happy and it warms my heart and I'm just so glad that things like this are able to happen and I'm very excited to see the future of the show. So thank you guys so much and I really do encourage everyone to get involved because Potterless really does have a great community, whether it's Twitter, whether it's the Facebook group, the private fancy Facebook group, whatever it is, there's some really great people out there listening and you are one of them. So thank you so much. I cannot thank you enough. And of course, as they always say in Hogwarts, all of the time when they end these little heartfelt rambling sessions to each other. Wizard on.